Finally got a power rack. Oh man. Where am I gonna put a preacher curl bench? Welcome to Vintage Weights PGH. My name is Rob and this is a York Barbell Preacher Stand. This video will go over a deeper dive into the history of the York Barbell Preacher Stand than you may have seen on Home Gym History recently. If you haven't seen that Home Gym History, then check out the link in the description. I get into the history of the Preacher Curl Bench with Adam from Garage Gym Lab, and I also explore the modern history of his invention, the Preacher Pad, which I'll get to later in this video. But speaking of this video, after the history, we're gonna to touch on the restoration process for the Preacher Stand, and then we'll get into a deeper review than I provided on Home Gym History of the York Preacher Stand. Should you pick this up if you see it on the used market? How much should you pay for it? Who would this be good for? Who might not like it? First, let's talk about history. So in 1964, York Barbell purchased the rights, the patent, and the various supplies needed to make the Easy Curl Bar, which is what they called it. This is a vintage York Easy Curl Bar. It's a standard bar. There's also an Olympic version. When placed with the preacher stand, you can do preacher curls. But what's the history of the stand? Well, let's take a deeper dive into some old Strength and Health magazines. If we take a look at this 1959 Iron Man magazine, this is from April, May, 1959. And then we have a long article about the famous Vince Gironda, his life and training methods. In the article, it gives a nice description of his gym. So that's some background, some context to the place in which the Preacher Curl Bench was popularized. And I say popularized because it was supposedly developed when he was at the Easton Brothers Gym, but this is now that he has Vince's gym, and this is what his gym was like. So seeing the value of weight training, he opened his own gym at Ventura Boulevard in North Hollywood on April 1st, 1946. His studio is operated in such a very unique manner. Each member has a key, and the gym is available for training 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Vince lives in an apartment over the gym and usually puts in 12 to 14 hours per day helping his members and finding time to train most every day. <laughs> that is dedication. If it's true, maybe it's hyperbole. I'm not sure. But down here it tells us that the gym is a conventional type and really looks like a gym as if it is filled with many beautiful pictures of the greats in the field of weights. The gym consists of 1,800 square feet of floor space and has just about every known piece of equipment. The cheap bench I had prior to this that had a curling kind of attachment to it, a preacher curl attachment to it, I missed that preacher curl attachment. Then I discovered this product, the York Preacher Stand, which seemed to fit the bill. It's a single unit, so it's got a base, that says York Barbell on it. And then the piping, the post, if you will, it adjusts and there's a pin that goes into that base to adjust the height so you can do it standing or sitting. And it's compact enough that I thought, ah, I'll put it in the corner of the gym and this will be perfect. I can sit on my bench and I can do preacher curl. But before we get into my full review and my thoughts on this, let's take a look at how I took this from being pretty banged up and scraped and rusty to looking, I think, really good. This is the restoration process for the York Preacher Stand. hey -o. <laughs> So the Preacher Stand's made up of essentially four parts. You've got the base, you've got the outer post, if you will, and then you've got this inner post. The inner post is identical to those that you would find in York squat stands with one exception. At the top they've welded this piece that 
allows for the angle of the pad. The last of the four pieces, so one, two, three, four, would be the pad. And you can know you have an authentic York Barbell preacher stand, not just from the base, but also because on the back of the pad, much like on the back of a lot of gym equipment and vintage gym equipment, there is a tag talking about how it's polyurethane foam, 100%, and it says York Barbell Company, 25 Northridge Avenue, York, Pennsylvania. Now there is a fifth piece that I'll talk about later, but these are the four main components and the four components that you'll probably find if you're purchasing this in the wild and finding this used. I treated them as three different restoration processes. The first of which was the base. So let me set this aside. The base just has a bolt that attaches it here. So I took that off and then I used the same oxalic acid process that I use on weight plates to reveal the original paint of the base because the base is cast iron. This black color that you see on the base is 100% original paint. Now, when it comes to the post, the piping, if you will, it was very scraped up. And part of that was because of the inner pipe sliding in and out, but also just because of wear and tear and use over the years. So first, I stripped off the paint using the same process with Citra Strip that I use for stripping the paint off of weight plates. You can find a video for that process along with a video for the oxalic acid process with specific directions and pictures on my website, www.vintageweightspgh.com. But getting back to things, after I stripped the paint off and got it to bare metal, then I repainted it. So this is repainted and so is the inner tube the inner post, the inner piping. At that point, I had two thirds of it done. And this is going from, you know, more difficult restoration process, oxalic acid and stripping paint and repainting to the easiest. I decided that this padding, it didn't have any rips or tears in it. Even the back was fairly well maintained. All the original staples were still in it and nothing was coming loose. So I didn't want to take this apart. I didn't want to re-upholster it. That is a process that I've done in the past and it is something that you can do fairly easily. I've seen various people do it. But for this, you know, these are old weights. It's okay if they show a little bit of age in my opinion. So I decided that I'd just use a household cleaner on this. And that's what I did. Spritzed it on there, just all purpose cleaner, and then wiped it down. It took about one minute <laughs> and here we are. Now, what about that fifth piece? Well, let me go find it and I'll show you. I think it's sitting up here. All right, so the fifth piece is this sort of bolt looking pin because there are holes for different adjustment heights in the upper portion, and then you'll see that there's a half circle in the lower portion that this sits within. So whenever you put this in, you can take the bolt out completely, which is why I had to go find the bolt because usually I sit down and I use this from a seated position, but then you can put the bolt in at different points to adjust the height. You just slide it straight through the holes and then it sits down into the groove. And you can adjust the height all the way up to a standing position if you would like. This is not original. I often see that people are searching for this and big thanks to Joe, one of my favorite Facebook groups. It's the Vintage York Barbell Owners group on Facebook. He posted a while ago, probably a year or two ago, about finding these from the perfect supplier. You have to buy a minimum of five, and I'll put the link to that supplier if you're in this situation. It's a unique situation to be in. These are the same pins that are used on the York Squat stands as well. So if you need one of these, that's the place to get them. I think with shipping, it came out to a little less than $15, more like $12 to $13. Sounds like a lot for this, but if you really want this to be in your gym, go out and get it. That's the restoration process to completely bring this into functional and good order. 
Now, let's talk about my thoughts on actually using it. I'm six foot tall, and when it comes to actually using this product as a standing creature curl, this was perfect in terms of the height. If you're taller than six foot tall, this is not going to be tall enough. So six foot tall is pretty much the maximum height for the user. My discrepancy with it as a standing preacher curl is the same main discrepancy I have and negative comment I have to say about the product when I'm seated, which is that being a single post like this, it tends to rock. You know, you've got to really put your weight down on it to make sure that you're not rocking and rolling while you're curling. So down in a seated position, there's a couple other things that stood out to me. One of which would be the width. When it comes to the width, for me, and I'm a pretty average guy, I'm not really jacked, I'm not humongous. I'm six foot, 200 pounds. And I, I think personally, you know, I'm not putting myself down by saying this, but I'm, I'm on the narrower side. You know, I wouldn't mind my shoulders being a little more broad. But setting aside my <laughs> insecurities, the point of telling you that is to point out that this is barely wide enough for me to comfortably use it. Like I have to really focus on getting my arms in and getting my elbows on that pad. Otherwise, I have the tendency to slip off the pad. And that is not the greatest feeling. That's jarring. That could hurt you. So be careful with the width of this. The last negative comment I have to say would be right here at the base. If you have a modern bench that has any type of handle on the front, this is my Rogue adjustable 3.0, that handle on the front prevents the base from getting close enough to me. So I have to sit on the very edge of the bench to do curls with this, and that's just not comfortable. Now, I could turn the bench sideways and then sit on it, but I don't want to do that. I think the natural inclination for most people would be to sit on the end of their bench to do this work so that their legs have freedom of movement and they're not up against the bench on either side of them. So that's where the handle on the end of your modern bench, if you have a bench in that style, might get in the way of using this vintage product. The positive sides to this would be that you can find these on the used market fairly cheap. I bought this one, it was with a couple other things, but it ended up coming out to about $30. After supplies, we'll call that about $45. So not bad for $45. Now that was hunting online and finding it very cheap. How much would this go for if it were on, say, eBay? Probably about $200. How much would this go for from a, you know, knowing collector, if you would, on a local market? Maybe a little less, 100, 150. And on eBay, maybe a little more, because as I've said many times before, eBay is wild and unpredictable. So who knows what'll happen. But what I'm getting at is that that's an advantage, the cost. If you find this in the wild, it's going to be cheaper than a lot of the preacher curl benches that you might buy in modern times in 2023. The other big strength of this is just how solidly built it is. Even though I can kind of rock it if I'm not paying attention, this is a big piece of cast iron down here that's weighing this and anchoring this product. This base really sets forth a cool product. The other advantage of this is that you can get creative. You can do some DIY stuff with it. A lot of folks will take this part out and then they'll put in a bowl and make it into a chalk bowl. That's kind of cool to have a chalk bowl stand with some vintage kind of flavor to it. The adjustable nature of this is really nice for anyone six foot or <laughs> less in height. And the pad itself, I find the pad to be at a decent angle. The pad as compared to the original Vince Gironda Preacher Curl Pad is very slim. So if you watch Home Gym History, you'll see my advice for how to overcome that that I got directly from VinceGironda.com. Couldn't go with a better source. Even with that said, the padding for being probably 40 years old 
has held up really nice. That 100% polyurethane, man. Admat, you gotta take note of this. But speaking of Admat, let's talk about my favorite modern Preacher Curl bench, or Preacher Curl product, I should say. I absolutely love the Preacher Pad. It was invented by Adam at Garage Gym Lab. Check him out. He has a couple more followers than me. And then he partnered with the gentleman at Abmat and they produced the Preacher Pad. The Preacher Pad is a single unit. It's only two pieces. It is a foam inner portion with a nice covering. I was fortunate and blessed to be gifted with this particular Preacher Pad by Admat, so thank you very much, Admat. And even with it being something that was nicely given to me, I'm giving it a fair shake. I've been using it for a couple months now, and these are the reasons why I think it is a worthwhile product. Rewind this video, watch everything I said for why I needed this vintage York Preacher Stand, and that's why I think it's a worthwhile product. But if you don't want to rewind the video, I was just trying to get more watch time. I think the algorithm works like that. <laughs> then I'll just regurgitate it for you right now. It's small and versatile. You can put it in the corner of your gym. You can leave it sitting on the floor like a bench for your small children. That's one of the ways it's used in my home gym. It's light. You can pick it up and place it in your lap and then use it at your leisure, whether in your rack or outside of your rack. You can use it anywhere in your gym. Even though I really enjoyed that the Preacher Stand from York, the vintage version, could sit in a corner, this can sit anywhere. Woo! And it doesn't even get damaged when you bash it off the vintage version because there's a nice foam inner core. The foam is a nice consistency. It's not too squishy. It's not too tough. It's easy when you look at the logo on this to place your elbows in the position that you want because you might want to do a wider curl, a narrow curl, or opposite. On this vintage pad, you're just kind of eyeballing it. But I know that if my elbows sit right on the lettering, I'm in position for more of a narrow grip. If it's just outside the lettering, then I know that I'm pretty much in a regular grip. And then if I'm right on the edge, because you can see this is significantly longer than the vintage York Preacher stand, I know that I'm going with a wider stance. The last thing I'll say about this that I think is just pretty cool is the collaboration involved. Unlike Bob Hoffman and York Barbell that tried to kind of sneak off with the curling bar and then came out with this curling stand unrelated to Vince Gironda and his product, which was essentially a curling stand, Bad Matt partnered with the creator and they came out with a collaboration so it's a harmonious effort. It just makes you feel good. It's got good vibes to it, whereas eh, there's a little murky history here. I know that doesn't mean much when it comes to a price point, and this does retail currently for about $135. There's a link in the description, by the way, that'll earn me a couple pennies and roll those couple pennies towards my efforts if you use my link to purchase it. But for all the reasons I named, I think it is superior to the vintage version. Please don't unsubscribe from my channel because I've chosen something modern over vintage. I'm sitting within a modern rack, for example. It happens. I'm still going to hang on to the vintage version because I like using it for various things. But this is what I use. This is my workhorse, if you will, when it comes to preacher curls. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and comment, all that happy stuff. It's a great way to support the channel. You can also support the channel by picking up a preacher pad by clicking through the link in the description to make sure that that affiliation comes back my way. A big thank you to Admat as well as Garage Gym Lab, Adam, for coming out with the preacher pad. And thank you to all the viewers for tuning in to see the history of the preacher stand from York Barbell Company. Why would it matter that you use this vintage preacher stand? Because old weights, new gains.